Oh, baby. Back to the Wizard Lounge. Back where I'm most comfortable in life. In the Winner's Lounge. What is up, everybody? Welcome into the DMVR Nuggets Podcast. <laughs> Orange, real, and fake is the – I almost said Denver Nuggets. As Team Serbia gets the win for Israel. And what was actually a very entertaining game. And no shortage of storylines. This was a very content-rich game. Mm. Lots of content. I have so many notes here. And to help me break it all down, I have got the tool man himself. What was what was Tim uh, Tim the tool man Taylor's sidekick? What was his name? I, I, you always ask me. I always forget, man. I, Tim, always I forgot. Think. I'm gonna think of it. Al Borland. Al Borland right. here in the house with me, aka Brennan Vote. What's or up, Or the Brawny man? Is that the paper towel guy? Brawny Brown. Well, you we actually do look like Brawny, yeah. the, the paper towel guy. Yeah, um, you do. Um, did you just watch Team Serbia? I did. It was sick. It was sick. We had to sweat just a tiny bit today. Um, but it was it was actually kind of fun to watch the team under a little pressure, man. It was fun to watch him. A little bit later, Harrison Wind will be joining the show. Undisclosed location, um, taking his time getting here. I see him backstage. That's why I'm talking shit about him. Taking his time that getting to sense. the arena. Um, he'll be here any minute, though, guys, on his own time. Um, there he is. Oh, you put him on before he was even ready, Kale? Oh, oh. my goodness. Kale. Let's all, let's all watch Harrison get ready. Yeah. Luckily, he wasn't putting a shirt on. Oh, what's up, guys? Where wait, what's where up? are you at now? This is an especially undisclosed location. It's even more disclosed than the last location. Yeah. <laughs> it's even more. I got um, too many paparazzi out here, man. I gotta, right. I gotta keep that's it right. locked yep. in, you know. The Serbia just gets a win and mo- improves to four no in pool play, and this one had moments of dominance, but it also had some moments of concern, including. Team Serbia dropping like flies right now, left Oof. and right. Everybody on the team. Uh, and it made for some some crazy storylines. Should we start off the show, you guys, with a fast recap? Bang, bang, bang. Make Nothing it real fast. more than a fast recap. That's right. <laughs> Make Let's recap fast. the game for those that didn't watch. And by the way, every single day we start tweeting about this, and every single day somebody says, where are you watching? Guys, ESPN Plus is covering all of the games in HD, and it's $10 a month. You could sign up for one month. It's $10. You get to watch King Yoke and the rest of Team Serbia in HD every single game. It's actually really dope. You can also watch all these other games. So if you're on the fence or want to follow along, I'm telling you, 10 out of 10 fun right now. I'm having as much fun watching this as I do watching the Nuggets in the regular season. So just get it. The games are really, really fun. You're not going to miss out. $10. Um, All right, let's get into it. No Marinkovic again uh, in in this game. So you also have Militinov Militinov who's, who's, who's injured. Uh, you had no Marinkovic, and then we're going to get into some of the injuries that happened later, but you're already starting a little bit shorthanded. Jokic opens up the game with a three. I say, and I'm telling you, I really mean this. When Jokic opens the game with a made three, he's going to shoot 100%. Like, yeah, it's just, he, sure. he makes the first <laughs> yeah. three. But, okay, he's probably not missing for the next 10 minutes or so, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, I do have a note in here, though, that he was he's still not rebounding great. I know that sounds ridiculous because he had 11 rebounds and now three straight double-doubles. But there's a lot of – like, you can't judge Jokic on his numbers. You can judge him on what his numbers should be. And he, he there was three, four, five um, rebounds in the first half alone where I'm like – I agree. He usually grabs those, and that's part of what makes him so great. So a bit of a second- or third-gear performance from Jokic tonight, despite the fact that his numbers look like prime Wilt Chamberlain. Um, he did have two fouls early, and that's actually a storyline that circled back around later. I didn't think, and this is what's funny. I'm sitting here watching it here at DNVR HQ with a bunch of the fellas, and I'm watching the first few minutes, and I'm like, Yoke's not fully locked in right now. He's kind of second gear, maybe third. And you look up at the stat line, 14 points, like five rebounds, two assists. So I, I can't wait to see Jokic at 100% because he is – to me, am I wrong on this vote? Did it seem like he was in second, third, second gear for part of the game, third gear for the other part? No, I agree. They went to him more, so the box score is inflated, but I don't think he actually right. kicked it up a gear. I I still think it all looks a little easy for him right now. And I do wonder if on some of those rebounds you'd like to see him get, he's thinking, all right, well, I'll do that in the quarterfinals. We're good. You know? Right. I First of all, there's been a few moments, including in this game, where it's like, hey, all right, it's time to step up because now you need to kick it into gear for, for a short stint. And every time him and Micic both have, but yep. we'll get to that here in a second. Yep. Um, Lucic went back to the locker room early and ended up coming back, but it did, I think, 
you know, it, it gave a little bit of concern and maybe more concern when he got hurt again in the second half. And then Jokic put up, as I mentioned, 14 points, four rebounds, one assist in his first 10 minutes. Completely dominant. Second unit in all of these games so far, the second unit has checked in and picked the defensive intensity up. That didn't happen in this game. The second unit actually kind of got worked in the opening part yeah. of the quarter. So much that Israel actually took a lead. Um, and, and I was kind of surprised by that. What did you make of the opening of the second quarter, Harrison, when Israel stormed from, I think, 10 or 12 back to take a one-point lead? Well, I just thought Serbia got away from its identity. Like mm. This this whole tournament so far, they've just been making the extra pass. They've been playing so selfless. They've been having five guys touch it on a lot of possessions. I, I felt like they got away from that in the second quarter. That's what allowed Israel to get back into it. They just kind of lost their soul yeah. Yeah. for a little bit, especially when Jokic went out there. Yeah. I agree. This was a game, and, and maybe part of this was the weird rotation because, again, we're going to get to it at the end, but they closed with a lineup that I doubt had played together. Right. Um, Lucic had some good stuff in this yeah. game. I've been talking about how he wasn't, hasn't been totally impressive over the last few games on offense, although I think defensively he has been. He had a couple nice like one-on-one -on -one moves in, in this game, including a nice shimmy-shake turnaround that I was very impressed with. Um, and then Micic. I, I don't know if this is who he is, if this is who he's going to be. He has had buckets at all the important moments yep. of, this, of this tournament so far, and the second quarter was no uh, was no different. He hit a big three that was sort of like a – they cut it really close, need a big play, and he made one, as well as obviously Jokic making a, a ton. Jokic checked back in with six minutes to go. I love this about Coach Pesic. He's been weird on some of the rotations and stuff. This game called for like, hey, we got to buckle down and yeah. you know stop this run. Jokic comes back early, and what do you know? It was the right move. He finishes the first half with 20 points, five rebounds, two assists, three steals, and one block, and Serbia took a 12-point lead. <laughs> Most of his damage was done by halftime. Yeah. Most, that stat line at half is ridiculous. Oh, by the way, I think – No turnovers at that point, too. Yeah, perfect from the field. Um, in the second half, I thought Israel made some good adjustments. They started putting Jokic in pick and pops a lot early on, uh, just making him guard out on the perimeter. I thought he did a fine job. His positional defense, especially down the stretch, was good. But nonetheless, it does. if you make your threes and you put a big in pick and pop like that, it's tough to cover. And sure enough, right. through three quarters, I don't know what they finished off the look, but through three quarters, Israel was shooting like 50% from three. So mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, you make a big gamble and it was paying off. Um, they were also zoning up more against Jokic in the post. And I thought I actually had a note in, in here that said Serbia was getting a little stagnant on these post post ups to Yoke. Coach Pesic calls a timeout or there was some type of stop in the action coming out of it. Immediate couple cuts like right. they go to the post entry and they get that movement. So it was a great recognition, in my opinion, of, of that and immediately go to it. And what do you know? Serbia once again goes on a big uh, a big run. Um, let's see. Lucic then gets hurt again in the third period, and this one's concerning. He gets hurt, and Nedevich gets hurt. So all of a sudden, you're missing key rotation guys. Four, basically, four players down the stretch of this game that you don't have at your disposal for various reasons. And I thought it really showed. Israel kept it within 12. It's 65 to 58, I think, going into the fourth quarter. And then you have to go to a fourth quarter rotation that's missing four key players. What do you know? Jokic starts the fourth. I think he played the entirety of it. Um, and it was a group that was unfamiliar. Jokic was getting frustrated. I saw some frustration. You know, when Jokic had, you know, Tori Craig or Michael Porter, there's times where he gets like, you could tell he doesn't like a possession. And he, rather than say something, you could, he almost pouts or like gets passive aggressive on the court. I saw that today from him on a few possessions. Now, I also saw him during timeouts try to coach. But like on the court, there's times when it's a possession when he just gets so mad. He's like, fine, do that dumb thing over there. And that's part of what happened in the fourth quarter. Israel cut it all the way to two. Uh, I thought Micic was bothered by the ball pressure in this game. Um, me, like you start putting that little guy, was his name Madar? Yam Madar? He, That's Israel legend Yam Madar. Yeah, Yam yeah. Madar. He was good, man. I was impressed with him. But what was most impressive was he really applied full court pressure mm. on Micic. And I thought Micic did, struggled with it in that fourth quarter. They actually did the best job. Again, another timeout. When they started going and getting the ball out of his hands earlier, and then or getting the switch where he had to guard Jokic in the post on the switch. Once they did that, it was like a 17-0 run or something in the fourth. I don't remember what the exact number was, but Serbia went on a big run. But 14, it's at least a note to me that Micic struggled a little bit with that full court pressure. And if I'm a team that's going up against Serbia in the elimination round, that's going to be a big part of my game plan is 
full apply pressure to him and try to get the ball out of his hands. Nonetheless, Serbia gets the win. It got close for a while. They got tested. But at the end of the day, I feel like this was still a bit of light work. They get the win. Uh, 89-78, move the 4-0. Oh. Harrison, what did I miss? The Serbia's role players, I lauded them after that last game versus Phil- Finland. I-, I came on this pod and I was like, I think Serbia is going to get to the gold medal game because of Jokic and Micic. I think they might win it because their role players are that good. They didn't shine as much as they did today. Yeah. I wonder how much fatigue played a factor in that. Because a lot. a lot of these guys, a lot of these role players, they're over 30 years old. You know, Kalinic, uh, Micic is 28, um, Lucic, Nedovic. A lot of these guys, they're not – as young as you think they might be, they're veterans. So this is Serbia's fourth game in five days, right. which is ridiculous. They Short have an off rotation. day before. Yeah, they have an off day before they play Poland in two days. I wonder if it just they were is they weren't just quite as spry as they've been for those first three games. And a short rotation. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you know that I think that is true. And it is also true in the same breath to say, like you, I thought you were right earlier. They didn't play the right way today. There's a Serbian way. We know what that is. That's not what they were bringing. Um, but yeah, it does seem like Kalinic and Lucic are grinding. And in one of those two is in virtually every lineup on the floor at any point. So yeah, that's a good point. What you said about them bothering Micic is, is definitely a storyline, though, because they've got Yaramaz behind them. Right. I feel like when push comes to shove, Coach Pesic is going to trust Nemanja Net- Netovic more maybe than Yarama just because he's the veteran. He's right. he's been there before, so he he has quickly become I think like a key player to focus on for Serbia. Big fourth big fourth quarter minutes today from Yaramaz. He was he was a yeah he was good today. Yeah. yeah, he had some big shots too. I think two of them, two big boy shots that made this game again. I think Serbia would have won without those. But it would have been a game that went down to the wire. Instead, right. it kind of was over with four or five minutes left, and in large part because of the big shots he hit. And by the way, another – it's hard to say a great adjustment from Coach Pesic because he didn't have a lot of options. So, like, he kind of played the guys that were healthy. But it, I did like that when Micic was starting to be pressured so much, there was a couple possessions where Serbia didn't get going until late in the shot clock, so they didn't get good stuff out of it. You put Yaramaj out there, and it's just another guy that can handle the ball and sort of initiate like that and – it ended up working out beautifully. So um, I, I, I'm with you, though. Here's what's interesting. This tournament, Serbia has now played four games in five days, two sets of back-to-backs. They have a day off, and then they come back on Thursday to wrap up. They'll play Poland, and they'll wrap up group play. Spoiler alert, they're going to be first in their group, in Group D. I think even with a loss, they would end up first in Group D. Well, they might have to be – well, that head-to-head, because Poland's 3-1. and one, So they do – to seal it, they want to beat them. Obviously. Okay, sure. They're going to have to beat Poland, but I, again, they should beat Poland. It, you know, not, don't want to overlook anybody, but Serbia is pretty good. Of course. So, yeah, so they, they should, should beat them. Favorite. After that, though, everything slows down. So then you get a day off. Then you start on Saturday, but it won't be Serbia. I think Serbia will play on Sunday. And so they're basically going to get two full days of rest off with playing on the third day. And then there's a couple days off after that before the next round. So they go from playing all these games in a row, which I kind of like. It would be what it would have been different if instead of the back to backs, you just played every other day all the way through to the final. I kind of like that you put a lot of these games close together. And then when you get to the tournament, teams will be rested and healthy and, and all of that. So I kind of like how it shakes out. Um, is there any other big takeaways you had, Harrison, from this game? You guys hit on it a little bit, but it was so easy for Jokic in the post today. <laughs> It was, it, it was comical. It was another game where I'm sitting here laughing. He's the only player that's made me ever do that. But um, it was so easy. So, so easy for him in the post today, man. Oh, God. Some of the post-ups truly were hilarious. Like, there were a couple. Slow motion, almost. Slow mo- Well, one, we were joking that uh, Jokic went too slow for, the, for, like, on one possession. He was so slow, the guy jumps – We've seen this a lot where the de- defender jumps so early because he's just like, am I supposed to jump yet? I, and he's like, I know you're about to jump. There you jumped. Now yeah, yeah, you did it. Yeah, you did it. <laughs> it's so funny. He's um, like Shaq in the post right now. Just unstoppable. Yeah. And then when his jumper's going, you know what else you do? And by the way, a funny play in the fourth quarter, he gets Madar switched off onto him. And what does he do? Go down to the block? No. He actually cuts 
he he out quit he gets Madar the size mismatch and instead he cuts and outcuts him and gets a wide open layup off of it. It's just like it was incredible. I will say I think this is the first game, including qualifiers and Eurobasket, where Jokic did not get a dunk. I don't think he had a dunk tonight. Hmm. Well, he didn't need one. <laughs> he was too busy just throwing floaters over people. Just yeah. He also had that. Um, I forget who he was in the pick and roll with, but he had that like uh, running finger roll down the middle of the lane. Yeah. Do you guys remember that? I think it was of in the very first quarter. It was gorgeous. Um, the athleticism, guys. The athleticism is, is astounding right now you're, in the middle of the summer. You're, you're saying this tongue in cheek, but it's actually true. I'm not. I'm really not. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to contain myself. He's saying it with a shit eating grin, but it is true. Like, he honestly, I'm telling, I've been telling people this. He's quicker, spry, more mobile, more agile than I've ever seen him. Yeah. And some of this was arriving last year, over the last two years. Some of it was already there. So it's not like he's going from it's night and day, but it is just a little bit more. It's another degree where I really do feel like. He's a little quicker and more than quick, just nimble. Like he's, mm -hmm. he's employs the quickness better off of these cuts and what have you. So I very impressed with Jokic. And like I said, the part that's most encouraging is one, they're not going into the post as much as they could. And I think they're saving that for the elimination round. And two, Jokic, this was not a, like Jokic, we've seen Jokic when he has pedal to the metal headband game, like, you know, at the end of the year, the 2000 points, 1000 rebounds game. We've seen it uh, against the Clippers. We've seen it in the playoffs. This is third gear Jokic. Like he he turned it up to third gear in the second half when he needed to. And that's what's so encouraging to me. I almost wonder, I mean, I don't think it's all this intentional, but just reflecting on how it's worked out, they really played defense against Team Finland for at least three quarters. Like they were tired. They ran it. Um, and for most of these games, they've had such a great team thing going on. They really haven't exhausted the Jokic thing. And it almost felt like today they were like, you know what? The fellas could use a break. It's a short <laughs> rotation. We're just going to press the Jokic button and we're, yeah. we're going to ride that. But to your point, this is the ultimate insurance. And this is why Serbia is ranked number one, of course. For as good as they are as a team, as great as the role players are, these teams like Israel, Phil, and Poland, you got you to gotta show up to work. If you don't show up to work, they'll beat you. But the difference for Serbia and other teams is they have Jokic. And when push comes to shove, this guy is going to be able to get it done. And obviously, this is not the bar he measures himself against. I thought Micic was very good again today as well. His stat line is pretty good. 19 points, three rebounds, three assists. Um, only five of 13 shooting, so he didn't shoot well. But again, I, he just... I feel confident in him in big moments because he really does seem to step up and just kind of have a sense for what the team and what the game needs. So I continue. I remain impressed with him. Um, how concerned are you, though, Harrison, about the, the injuries starting to pile up? I know some of these, I think, is it with uh, Marinkovic and Militinov, it's illness. I don't know if it's the same illness, but you assume hmm. they'll come back, although it also makes you worried. Is that hmm. like? The rest of the guys are going to get sick by Thursday or Friday. It's another concern you have. Interesting. But... Did did somebody eat a full pizza by themselves? Is that what happened? <laughs> it's it's concerning. I think you know the age factor. Like I talked, like I just talked about, it is definitely something to keep in mind. And look, these are the easiest games by far that they're going to have. Uh, Poland's probably the best team in the group, you know, and, and they play yeah. them up next. Yeah. So it's only going to get tougher. Do you think these three games the best in the group, like for That's sure? That's what I'm saying. They're the best yeah. team in the group. I'm not questioning you. Yeah. I'm, I'm being serious. Yeah. I think they are. I, yeah. I, I think so. I yeah. think Who so. I mean, Nether Netherlands and Finland were definitely uh, the worst, I think. But even I Finland, think. dude, Finland rocked Poland. And like they've had success on this stage. In the, I really yeah. think we're underestimating the way the middle of the pack in this tournament is going to like, you can't just trace the results. They're taking chunks right. out of each other. They, they yeah. lost by 40 points to Finland. That was probably just an off night, I would have to say. 89 to 59. That's, <laughs> That's just like, crazy. 89 That's what I'm saying. This tournament is weird. I mean, I watched Finland. I don't know how they could have done that to another team at this tournament. Poland's better. I do think Pol maybe it's a bad matchup, but I think Poland's the second best team in the group, in my opinion. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, then big challenge coming up. I'm glad that they get a day of rest here. And honestly, it would shape up the best for Team Serbia if, if they uh, – you know, do get challenged. But I want to talk about that, about are you concerned at all that Serbia hasn't truly been challenged? Even tonight, I never got nervous. Are you mm -hmm. concerned at all for that? And also looking around, 
we can start to see. We can't fully see who Serbia is going to play in the elimination round. We start to get a little bit of a sense, and I want to talk about all those things on the other side of this break. Uh, Breckenridge Brewery, guys, they've got a birthday coming up, 32 years young, and to celebrate, Breck Brewery is throwing a weekend-long hoot nanny kick off the fall with live music, food, beer, of course, and games October 8th and 9th, so this is a little over a month away. At their Littleton location, they've got national acts like Spin Doctors and local favorites, Railroad Earth, rocking out for you. Uh, so stay tuned to everything DNVR for more details for Hoot Nanny giveaways, all of that leading up to October 8th. Check out the link in the description where you can go to breckbrew.com for more details and the official artist lineup, uh, which is right there. At DraftKings Sportsbook, guys, football fans, first Sunday of the NFL season is here. Just in a few days, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving new customers a can't-miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. And then as an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the throw of DraftKings early uh, with their early win promotion. Bet on an NFL team to win if your team leads by 10 points. At any point during the game, you get paid instantly. Even if your team loses, just get up by 10, you win, you cash out, boom, you're done. Uh, Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DNVR to get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet this Sunday. That's code DNVR only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. She's show notes for details. All righty, back here, segment two, DNVR Nuggets podcast. Don't forget, this is not just a live show, although we love when you guys watch us live after the games. These are always great, but it's also a podcast. So tomorrow we'll be doing a show, and if you don't catch it live, you can always catch it on your phone or wherever you get your podcasts uh, as the DNVR Nuggets podcast. So, um, all right, let's look ahead a little bit and talk about some concerns ahead. So if you look at the seating for this, Serbia is in Group D. They're going to finish first. I mean, knock on wood, I don't think I'm really jinxing this, but they're going to finish first, most likely. D1 would end up playing the fourth seed in Group C. At the moment, that is looking like Estonia or Italy. Mm. Neither one of those teams is very good. To me, the round of 16, you go from 24 teams down to 16, it becomes basically the sweet 16. It's just a single elimination tournament. We'll get down to the end. Italy Estonia to me is another game that I'm not saying anything, but can be completely overlooked, but it's another tune up in my opinion for, for team Serbia. It's another game where it's like, play how you're supposed to play. You're probably going to win by 20 points. Um, so I look at that one and I think that's a great, that's sort of a great outcome. Any disagreements? Little disrespect to my guy, Nicolo Melli in Italy. They just beat Croatia, Adam. I look but I'm, I'm with you though. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, then, so I see some people saying possibly Croatia as well. Let me see. Croatia's two and one. Estonia and Italy, both one and three and one and two, respectively. So we'll have to wait and see. Croatia would be a crazy one. If you drop Croatia, Croatia. yeah. Croatia's the team that I look at, and I'm like, how are they not better? They're, like, so I, I've talked a lot to our respective friends across the pond about this. And Croatia is one of the perfect examples of – If you look at this tournament from an NBA perspective, you go, give me that roster. They're really good. But the, the, there's a culture and philosophy of basketball to these other nations that Croatia at least doesn't always display or doesn't manifest in their game. Like they lack chemistry, as I'm told, despite aggregate talent. Bojan Bogdanovic, Zubats, right. right. Mario Hazonia. Sarich, like and also just talent, and also just I think a little bit of a rivalry there. You know, you're talking about Serbia, Croatia, so it'll be a little bit more, sure. uh, you know, meaningful. I don't know. You know, we've talked about the supposed curse, the '95 EuroBasket team when Serbia won. Your uh, Croatia did not stand on the on the podium for this. Have not medaled, you know, in one of these competitions since. So there's like a history, a backstory, like all of this. To me, that forget talent, forget the fact that Croatia has lost to some not so good teams in the pool play. That game, to me, would just have a little bit of extra added oomph. People in the comments can tell me if you agree or disagree. And by the way, I see why I thought it was Estonia, because I forgot that in in Eurobasket, you get a point even for losing, two points for winning. And Estonia has just played one more game than Italy. So I'm looking at the standings in their four, but they'll actually end up five or six, almost guaranteed. So it's really Croatia or Italy 
Um, just the way they do the standings is a little confusing there. Um, so it'll be one of those two teams. To me, <laughs> I kind of hope it's Italy, but we'll see. I don't know. Um, and then after that, you get into the second place A team and the third place B team. If we go, we scroll up right now, the second place A team, we're looking at Turkey or Montenegro or Spain or Belgium, one of those teams. Turkey and Spain, both very good. I mean, we just saw Serbia play Turkey not too long ago. That was a that was a dogfight. So that one could be really yeah. could be really big. And then B is the group of death. <laughs> I love B. Slovenia beats Germany today. Um, so Slovenia, Germany, and France all tied at three on three and one. One of those three teams is going to be represented as the B3 in that. That's a heck of a matchup too. So I say all that to say it's hard to follow this, especially in audio form. Right. But I think that Serbia is going to have the first game of the 16 B, one they should be very heavily favored in. Every other game past that is probably going to be one of the, the good teams. And you're going to have three straight good, good games in my opinion, um, which is shaping up to be great. That's how it should be. Turkey is a team that plays with a lot of passion a lot of just fire, but we did see what Serbia did to Turkey in, in the friendly or, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, um, does it worry you at all vote uh, just that Serbia would probably play as early as the second round of the elimination, the best team that they will have faced so far in this? Do you feel like that's a little early? I mean, it. I definitely follow the logic of saying you'd like to ramp up in terms of intensity. But I just think there's a way you got to look at like Serbia, in my opinion, is pound for pound the best team at this tournament. It's single elimination. These other teams are often better than given credit for by folk in our position. Like anything can happen. But I think you got to look at it like if you're Serbia, we like our chances in any one game. We're not, they might, but in my opinion, there should be no playing of seeding or whatever. If it's Greece in this, if it's Greece next, give us Greece, right? And, and so on and so forth. I just think they're good enough that, um, Whenever they're asked to turn it on, you know, they can do that. So I'm almost down to see them get tested sooner rather than later. The one nice thing here is that it looks like Greece will almost certainly be on the opposite end of the bracket. A1 and C1 are going to be the two teams that are mm -hmm. on the opposite. So the winner of, you know, Spain, Turkey, basically, whoever comes out on top of that one, as well as the Greek, it looks like Greece is 4-0. They've, they've clinched it. Whoever went, so those two teams will be on the opposite end, and that's nice. Like, I would love right now, as I look at things, I would love a Greece Serbia final. I think that would be one the of the best stories. If that's on the table, I think that's where we're going to be headed. I, it just seems right. Like, a rematch of that ridiculous game in Belgrade for, for Eurobasket, Jokic and Giannis, oh. last four oh. MVPs, man. Like we we've talked about the the perfect story. Like that is included in the perfect story, right? It really would be, I think. <laughs> it really would be great. Do you have like teams that you're sort of pulling for right now outside of Serbia, Harrison? I mean, Slovenia is the other team I'm watching most closely just cuz uh Vlatko's of course playing there. He did not have a good game today though. <laughs> yeah. Probably don't need to spend much time on that. Um so I guess, I guess Slovenia is the other team I'm most tapped into, per se. Am I rooting for anyone else? Hell no. Absolutely not. Come on. There's rooting, and then there's just like, I'm impressed with, or I'm enjoying. What about you there, Vote? Yeah, I, I like that framing, because I don't, I'm definitely not rooting for, I'm a sucker for any underdog in any situation, to be honest. Like, that is so, basically any team who's on the verge of an upset. So, you know, I've enjoyed the Georgia wins even though those Bosnia wins. Um, Germany has been probably the most fun team other than Serbia for me to watch. Cause I think even though the, despite the loss today, I like the way they play. I hate watching France. No disrespect. to my guy. <laughs> I, I also don't think they're good. Like they're yeah. athletic and they can play defense. You, you know what it is though. Here's what's funny, man, is I like Fournier a lot. I'm a big Fournier fan, former nugget. We could do a whole list of former nuggets. Jan Vesely, Costas Papa Nicolau. Right. Guys we don't really have an attachment to, but they're former nuggets so whatever. But it really just comes down to one guy. It's Gobert. You, like Gobert's so unlovable, and he's like the he just becomes the face. Dude, of he's the France. worst star ever. You like you ask French like huge passionate French basketball fans like, what do you think of Team France? They're like, let's go. You're like, what do you think of Gobert? And they're like, take him or leave him. I don't know. <laughs> <He's there. laughs> 
I am surprised by Team France, and I guess they're still in it three and one. Like they only lost the one, so they still you know have some some work ahead of them. But um, but I'm with you at that at this very moment. Knock on wood. At this very moment, they have not looked like one of the more impressive teams out there. The offense is just. I think they. And I don't think that's just they're struggling. I think it's a symptom of the roster. I don't. I don't know if they have the af- the half court offense to keep up with a team like Serbia, for example, who can absolutely defend them on the other end. So, the team that I've kind of become my side piece team through all of this, weirdly enough, has been Germany. Yeah. And part of it is just I really like Franz Wagner. Like I've been very impressed with him. So. He's a guy that stood out. I'll tell you some other guys that have stood out to me. Danny Abdia has looked really good. He looked good tonight. Really he good. Hit some really good plays. And then Alperin Shangun to me is very impressive. That's part of what I've liked about this tournament is you've seen some of those guys who are on the rise, you yeah. know, maybe a little bit young, and you get to see them in an elevated role from what they are in the NBA. And th- those guys, Franz Wagner, Alperin Shangun, Denny Abdia, they've all impressed me so far uh, in, in their play. Did you guys um, know Avdi is half Serbian? Is every, he really? Every, every player. <laughs> ask the chat about every player you like in this tournament. They're like, well, they're his dad. His dad is Serbian. Yeah. They're like, not technically Serbian, but you should try their Rakia. Like, very clearly, they just that's trace so their, like, the, the always really, sunny meme. Uh, that's so yeah. funny, man. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so much so far. Um, what We have a super chat, Kale. We can go ahead and get to that super chat now. I want to see what it was. We have one here coming from J-Rock. He says, Jokic is setting it all up. Euro League MVP championship. I like it. Euro basket, but you know what? We'll let that slide. I made that mistake too before. NBA three times MVP and NBA champion. Let's do it. Vote and I are manifesting it. Let's go. Hey, and he puts 555, which I don't know the significance of it, but I'm all for it. Jeremy, Jeremy, I respect it. I'm just saying if we're shooting for the moon, throw finals MVP in there as well. Finals. I mean, I think that was implied. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's kind of implied. Yeah, I if they're going to win, he gets it. We yeah. all know what's up. It would be dope. I'm telling you, man, we've talked about it. We've joked about it, but I really do feel like my new brightest timeline does include Euro Basket Gold. It's like, hey, I feel like it has to include it now. It I mean, to. We're, we're too deep in it. We're so deep into it for sure. Um, I was talking with Matt Moore, and I put this out on Twitter. I'm workshopping a take. Actually, I put it out in the chat yesterday while you guys were doing the show. This is like, for me, at least as good as March Madness. And the reason is a couple fold. March Madness happens in March. There's NBA games on at the same time March Madness is. That's one knock on it. This one's happening in the dead of the offseason. We haven't had real basketball to watch for months. So it's like Mm -hmm. extra special. It's like when it rains at the end of the summer or something, you're like, oh, I'm excited about this now. So there's that. There's another factor of the level of play is better than in, in March Madness. Like, it's funny. I was sitting here thinking if team Serbia was in March madness, they would almost certainly win like single elimination, anything can happen, but they would almost certainly win every game by 20 points. If they played like Kentucky, because they have the best player in the world at the NBA level, as well as a bunch of other guys who have like surpassed the college level of play. So you're looking at a better quality of basketball. You're looking at it coming at a time when, you know, uh, when you don't have any basketball, um, and then I, there's just something enjoyable about the stylistic differences of each team and just having this little bit of like, hey, we know the story of the Lithuanians or the Spanish or whatever. And it's just kind of – it makes it a little bit more fun. Where do you guys fall on this comparing March Madness to Eurobasket? I'm with it. Um, I'm definitely with it because you get that sense of passion from these guys that also shows up in college that you don't get – during the NBA most of the time, like a win for Serbia or a win for Bosnia, a a win for these teams at Eurobasket means so much. It also means so much when you're in college, you just get one win at the tournament. Like uh, just the passion in both of those events compared to the NBA regular season is just on, you know, a completely different level, obviously. And it's just every day too. I, I joke about how ridiculous five games in seven days is for full play. Do yeah. I love it? Of course oh, I yeah. love watching it. Like I, I, I love it. I, I hate it for these guys, but it's awesome as a viewer. I also think the argument about college versus basketball is so dumb because no one's defining terms. Like the level of play is obviously, I mean, the NBA versus college is obviously so different. What right. people are trying to talk about is the same thing we've enjoyed with, 
club level sports in Serbia and Eurobasket on the international level, which is sports is done best when consumed through a community lens. When you right. feel like you belong, when you totally. give it, when you give a shit, right? That, and, that's the thing about college. You're right. That, that people from the outside don't know is it means something a little bit extra to people, especially if they went to that school. It's like, ah, that's me. Yeah. Precisely. And the NBA, I think like people like us are committed to fostering that for folks in Denver, but it, for as much as we all love the game of basketball, the, the league of the NBA can be very soulless. And there's a there's a soulful nature to this tournament that is reminiscent of March. And you're just waking up every day like like I'm setting alarms so I can right. catch these games early. Like I'm loving this stuff. That that's been the coolest part too, is the time difference allows for these games. And I'm so glad that Serbia hasn't played at 5:30 because that's the early slot, 5:30 a.m. Denver time. That would suck. So far, knock on wood, they haven't fallen to that. But it is nice because I get up around seven o'clock. It's usually my wake up time with you know my kids getting ready for school or whatever. Seven o'clock rolls out. I turn the TV on. and I got a game at halftime, and I'm like, hell yeah! Like I'm waking up, but I don't even have to like warm up. I'm already like thrown right into it. Some good game is on, and I get to kind of wake up that way. So it's been fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts? March Madness versus Euro Basket, Harrison. What do I enjoy more? Um. Probably, probably March Madness, just because there's more of it. It's just. Do you think it could change though? Because it's we're all, we're not in the elimination round, so do you think it could change? Yeah, yeah, maybe. I, I might have a different answer in a week or two when the games get more important, the competition gets better. Like if if there's going to be a Cinderella in EuroBasket, that'd be pretty fun. You Ukraine. know. If, Ukraine, they're three and one. They yeah, if you can, if Ukraine could be the George Mason of Eurobasket, like that would that would be pretty crazy. I think, yeah, I, I think March Madness for me is diminishing returns. I think opening weekend of March Madness is the single best sporting like weekend in the world, personally. And there, there is so many games. It is sixty four teams, so it's like you never have to wait more than twenty minutes for a game finisher. If one game yeah. sucks, you have like a life altering upset happening on the other channel. Like it just keeps going. But from there, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse. It's so true. And this, this, I actually think it's starting at a high level. Of course, the basketball is played at a professional level, but I think the, the meaningfulness of it is going to escalate. And so I'm really excited to, to funnel into that, funnel out to that weight of it all it, it is true march madness's first four days the first two rounds are so much fun yeah. in large part because the bad games you just ignore like you don't if you actually had to watch every game you'd be like most of these suck but you don't right. because there's four games on at once and two of them are bad and you're like all right ignore those two i'm gonna watch this one but to your point vote when bucknell upsets kansas in the first round the second round is bucknell trying to recreate that magic in it all right and happened. then you're like, ah, oh, that's a lot of floaters, man. You know? Yeah. Oh, I guess they're not going to shoot 60% from three this game. Right. So they're just going to loot by 30. <laughs> anyway, I like both. I don't want to try. I, comparison can be the death yeah, of joy or it can kill joy. I like both of them. But I got to say, part of us, this is us giving the hard sell on Eurobasket because of the experience we had and some of the stories we've been told. And hopefully we'll be able to tell here in the coming weeks, months, as the documentary releases about why we feel so connected to it. But it's like... When you have something cool and you want to share it with other people, you're just yeah. like, no, I'm not just being the guy that went to Europe and had a good time and yeah. I'm trying to get you to I do know. it. It's like, no, this actually slaps. You got to check it out. It's Super dope. Out. <laughs> Dude, we, we've talked about on this pod already how we feel like this summer is maybe a jumping off point for Eurobasket where it's just – it's kind of blowing up a little bit. I still don't get why it seems like people – and I'm not going to name names, but it's a lot of high profile people in our business. It's almost like they're scared to comment or just think it's uncool to comment on Eurobasket. And I don't get it. Like so, some of these, you know, high level analysts and reporters, like I said, in our business, it's like, it's okay to watch Eurobasket and comments about how cool it is. But it, it seems like people are still either just a little afraid or they just they just don't think it's cool enough. They'd rather comment on the Drew League. Well, I'm telling you, part of the reason is because a lot of the people, the, the, the NBA media specifically has thrived in the non-basketball aspects of the game. Yeah. And so, like, Eurobasket obviously touches none of those. So the people that have climbed to the top, your Nick Wrights of the world, 
they've gotten to the top talking about things in a very specific way that if you talk about those in Eurobasket, people will just tune you out. So for example, I was actually wanting to do a segment of this. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow or something where it's like, how would NBA, the Nick Wrights of the world, how would they be breaking down Eurobasket right now? <laughs> And just give all of our dumbest takes. Like, oh my god, I, dude! Here's what, here's one thing I was thinking. There was the big fight. You guys touched on it uh, between Turkey and Georgia. Which, if that happened in the NBA, would be the only thing we talked about before, after, and during games. We would just be breaking down the fight and what it means. And you know, we're going to go live to Ramona Shelburne, who's now outside the courthouse. Like this, like, we'd be doing all these things, and instead. We're 24 hours removed from it, already already gone. Like the story is already like, hey, we're moving on to the basketball games. Maybe some of that is sweeping it under the rug. They don't sure, sure. That press. Yeah. But nonetheless, it's just different than the TMZ ification of the NBA, which would have made that story one, two, and three. Right. Yeah. I, I can report, though, that the NBA did send out a little Jokic highlight from the game today. They sent it out with the correct hashtag. They hey, did man. hashtag Eurobasket. Eurobasket. So we're, we're, we're going up and up. It's funny, man, because I really did when I. So if people don't know, they put out a, the the Sambor shuffle that Jokic hit against Giannis in the World Cup qualifying game. They said a flamingo shot or something like. No, they, they said like a one legged, one legged shot. Like they don't even know like, the Sambor shuffle. The, the two best players in the NBA, the two MVPs, they don't even know the Sambor shuffle, and then they called it Eurobasket, not World Cup qualifier. And I quote tweeted it with the pretentious, like, "Hey, I'm correcting you, you know, this or that," and I wasn't trying to be a dick. But it's like, hey, NBA, you need to get your shit together when you're talking about the two best players in the NBA. You just need to put, like, the tiniest amount of effort. And they ended up deleting the tweet. It ended up having an impact because they ended up deleting the tweet and then getting it right. I'm not trying to get anybody fired. I'm not trying to get, do any of that or be the pretentious guy. But I do think that it's important that the official NBA account, which somebody's like, you're getting mad at an intern. Guys, one of the biggest accounts in all of Twitter, that's run by a team of paid people. Like, this is not an intern. And they can yeah. afford to like study. They got it right. And I tip my hat to them. I'm honestly not trying to like shit on them. You made a mistake and made a correction. Great job. Great job. I've almost called this Euro League 49 times, just to be clear. Like every time I send a tweet, I'm like, I got the right one, right? And by the way, three, four I, weeks ago, I called it Euro League. Right. And 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 we're feeling passionate about this, you know, not lost on us, or at least me. Like two months ago, I was this guy. Like, oh, it's summer take a little break, do some other stuff. I wasn't sitting down to dial into Eurobasket, right. but I wish that I was because I out. really, I like the game of basketball more than the league of the NBA lets me believe. Does this make sense? <laughs> they make it too hard for me to enjoy a game. I yeah. already decided I like. We hate the NBA. We love the Nuggets. Yeah. That's yeah. So all time. it's just been so, so great to watch basketball. And I know where, naive to some of the like FIBA as an organization stinks there's a lot of like international tension that like we're not going to touch right I know it's not all fairy tale but it's basketball and I'm loving it let's take a break on the other side we got a couple super chats to get to as well as well as some notes from around the NBA that are a little bit interesting we'll talk about them on the other side these are our guys Avaka TV the greatest the GOAT in Colorado sports, the present and the future of television. They deliver amped up sports coverage for Colorado fans featuring Altitude Sports, AT&T Sportsnet, and the NFL Network. Get the most regional content for the lowest price for sports in all of Colorado, all in crystal clear HD. Evoca TV, of course, is also where our documentary from Serbia is going to be premiering. So get Evoca TV right now so you can be the first ones to watch it. You can get it for $25 a month, but with the code Colorado10, when you go to evoca.tv slash Colorado10, you're going to get $10 off per month for your first three months. Evoca.tv slash Colorado10, that's where you got to go. Evoca.tv slash Colorado10, no contracts, no catches, no hidden fees. Uh, check out Evoca TV today. Um, also, our newest sponsor, Game Time Tickets. I'm so excited to be partnered up with an actual ticketing app. So now I, I know where to go to get my tickets. I don't have to mess around with all these random sites. I'm not going to shout any out. But now I just go to Game Time Tickets. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. 
Ever dreamed of sitting in a seat you never thought of? 50-yard line, courtside, behind home plate, floor seats at a concert. It's now possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats that you thought you could never buy. So for Nuggets tickets, Broncos tickets, you guys can get awesome tickets last minute for cheap with the Game Time app. If you love DNVR, then you'll love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the YouTube description. Join over 15 million people who have downloaded the Game Time app and score the best seats to all of your favorite events. Love it. And by the way, another note on this Ivaca read that you did before there, like everybody knows they sponsored our trip to Serbia and made it possible. We're trying to do more and more stuff like that. And then the best way to support us is by supporting our partners and letting them know why you're going. A lot of people have, hey, switched to Ivaca and they tweet at us. The best thing you can do because if we succeed like that, we want to go back to Serbia. We want to go other places. And there's a, I love this setup that we're sort of testing out with Ivaca, whereby they sponsor this. They want to see, does it pay off? If it pays off, if people say, yes, we do want to see DNVR go to Serbia and make a documentary out of it, so much so that we're, we're willing to go there, guess what we're going to be doing a lot more of? Those types of things, those types of, uh, of products, which I'm very excited about for. So mm-hmm. shout out to Avaca TV. They really get us. They really do. Um, all right, we got some super chats coming in. What do we got? Uh, Avdia's dad played for Yugoslavia, former Serbia. Avdia is 100% Serb. 50% at least. I love that. <laughs> I, I love that you have the chance to edit your thing or write it. He's like, he's a hundred percent parentheses, 50%. He is Jeremy Grant of Serbia went with Israel to be the guy. I mean, look, I don't, who knows if that's really the Jeremy reason. Grant. Uh, he, he really went there. Just that's an the unbelievable call. It back. really is an unbelievable <laughs> comment. Uh, without knowing the full story, I'm going to say probably a little bit of a biased take, but nonetheless, the more important part is that his dad playing for Yugoslavia. That's a really interesting story. I mean, one of the cool things that we've learned is just how far the roots expand for Serbian coaches and, and players and families and this or that from Yugoslavia. So it's pretty cool. Uh, it's still a cool detail, even if the takeaway maybe is um, not the most trustworthy. What else do we have? Uh, J-Rock is back. He said, did Serbia officially give you guys an itch, a.k.a. Vindic, Maresic, Votic, Eric? I love that Eric doesn't even need one. <laughs> just Eric. <laughs> Eric. He's just Eric. 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 Dev is just Dev, a superstar. You guys deserve your itch. I don't. Would I be Marisic? We all got. Vindic, we all got Votic our own Serbian. Good. We all got our own Serbian names, but they are different. Like he's Hari for sure. Hari I'm Bronco. For sure. You're what? Bronco. Why are you Bronco? I, I didn't hear this. You're Bronco. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen ask, this. You gotta ask the Serbians, man. Uh, I don't make the rules. Bronco. <laughs> uh, I got so or Marash. Marash, I guess, would be my one. I, that sounds a little bit better than Marashic. Marashic doesn't sound right. It's like Pestic. I can't get to it. Um, to go back to that last comment, though, what I've learned this summer going to Serbia, meeting so many Serbian people, making so many new Serbian friends. Everybody's Serbian. We're Serbian. Nikola Jokic is Serbian. We're all Serbian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, did you guys see this video that dropped yesterday of Jokic's pregame workout? Do you guys happen to take a look at this? Yeah, yeah, I saw it. So it's funny because we've seen Jokic work out before, like in person. He does all these things. But this video, for whatever reason, was extra um, compelling to me. Because in it, Jokic is shooting right hand, right foot, right hand, left foot, left hand, left foot, left hand, right. Like he's just going through this workout of all, not all, but mostly like seven to 11 footers. And I loved it for a bunch of different reasons. One is, those are the shots he's so good at. And we always wonder, how is he so good? Well, he's taking left-handed floaters down the lane. He's practicing them so smooth. But also, I've mentioned this before, I think, maybe months back. In the U.S., in basketball culture in the U.S., we have a rule. If you, I don't, if you shoot in warm-ups in a group, you're getting ready for a game, and you shoot too close to the basket, you don't get the shot at shoot again. You have to shoot from a certain distance. Guess what this does? Everybody, I've never seen anybody warm up on seven footers. I'm not joking about this. Right. I've never seen it. And it was something cool to see Jokic, a professional player. Even in the NBA, you see guys take 15 footers, jump three pointers, feet, three pointers, mid range, and right at the rim. I just love that Jokic is like, you know, this zone that people just can see to you. I'm going to become the best ever at that. I swear to God. This is not a knock on Mason Plumley. He's had a hell of a career. He's carved out a great niche for himself in the league, was a great Denver Nugget. 
I watched him warm up before most games that he played for the Nuggets. I'm not kidding you. A part of his warm up before every single game was going around the arc and shooting probably 23s from so every different spot around the three point arc. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell are you doing, man? Right. Like, what are, what are you doing? Around. Take a jumper from the elbow. Like, yeah. come on, take a shot that you're actually going to think about taking in a game. And you're right. Yoke is really one of the few NBA players who every shot that he takes in a warm-up is a game shot. Yeah, and that's the thing about those little off-footers, off-handers, right? Like, that's those are the shots Jokic make, takes all game long. He's He gets positioned down low, and he scores. But it's... It, he just fills in the gaps. You go left, he goes right. If you're going too fast, he goes too slow. But he so just that he has touch from every angle. And it's to the point where if he puts one up within seven feet and it looks off, you're just like, oh, he was fouled. Like someone fouled him, whether they call yeah. it or not, because he's not missing. He almost always is, too, whenever he misses one. Although he had a bad miss today. Do you guys remember the? He, did. he had a miss I've never seen. He only missed two shots. One of them, way the heck off. I don't know what happened. He probably was fouled. If a Jokic shot bounces hard off the rim, you're like, wait, what? what? Did it slip? Like, did he get fouled? What, what happened? What happened? Luka Doncic was asked what other teams he's watching uh, in Eurobasket right now. And he said, Greece and Serbia. And then when asked why, he said, you guys know why. I love the answer. I love the answer. Uh, did you see this vote? Yeah, and the, with the little think? cheeky, with the little cheeky smile, Luca's oh, great. Oh, shit eating grin, not even cheeky. It's just yeah. like full shit eating grin. Luca's great. I think as yoke guys, we really do have to be Luca guys on non head to head nights, of course. Well, he's Serbian vote, as you know. That's so. what I mean. Of course, we love him. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm told he's not only player. Him, but culturally, he's really Serbian. I don't know him. Uh, but he's, yeah, I, he does seem to be an ally of our allies, which makes him an ally to me, unless he's yeah. an enemy. I'm just waiting for uh, Serbia and Slovenia and Yoke and Luka to get to Berlin and just have some incredible dinners there. I want to hear some <laughs> stories from that. Yeah. It is funny, though. I have had a lot because I'm talking to a bunch of the reporters and stuff that I met out there. And I'm like, man, Slovenia lost to Bosnia. Like, what happened? I didn't see the game. They're like, oh, they were out partying too late. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is true or not, or if that's just the default thing, but it does seem like they, it's always the excuse whenever one of these teams plays poorly. But they just say it so casually. It's like, oh, yeah, they, they were out late last night. No, Maybe that's – hey, look, in the NBA, that ha if, if you see James Harden put up a, a, a total dud in Atlanta, you know that's what happened. Like, of course, he, would, he's, he wasn't well rested. So maybe it's also known here that that's just how it's going. Yeah. Uh, I did. I loved his answer. I thought it's cool. I just love this coalition between Luka, Jokic, and, and Giannis. I just love it. And I really hope that they dominate the NBA for the next decade. And everybody, like I said, is forced to eat their vegetables. Yeah. Um, I saw a comment here. Where did it go? Oh, right here from J-Rock. He says, man, I would love to see Malone and Murray at title game in Jokic shirts. Yep. On the I, table. On the table. It needs we, to happen if they we, get there. We've seen, like, I think Cuban was out watching Luca play. You know, we've had some different, like, coaches, you know, out there. I'm not, I'm going to go as far as to say, I really want to see it. Like, this is, I'm not going to call it a must. I might call it a must, man. Wow. Like, <laughs> go for it. I think Michael Malone has to be there at the gold medal game. I think he if they're, has if they're in to it, be if there. They're in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think he has to be there, and I think he will be there. Yeah. What do you think, Vote? Are we going to see a Nuggets player and or a Nuggets coach? I will say this. I know members of the front office are there right now. Um, so some, some members of the front office, part of that is they're scouting. Like, also, yeah. also like, they're for – like, Marty's Lithuanian. Like, he's definitely and, there. And Tommy. And, and Tommy. Tommy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, yeah they're definitely there. there. I love this. The NBA is um, before the their shops guy. So – yeah. Uh, I would say odds to be there. Malone's a favorite. I would say Murray is your next guy. Well, I was going to say, what players do we most want to see there? Obviously, well, here's Jamal's probably one. Oh, Put power it, rank the play, Nuggets players you most want to see? I disagree. Well, 
We learned this. We learned Here's this. Is Aaron Gordon? Aaron Gordon. Yes. Aaron Gordon. And Serbia wants to see it. I mean, Aaron Gordon's a third Serbian, I heard. So. I mean, if, what if he somehow plays for them in next year's World I'm Cup? I'm saying, dude, if D. Bost can play for Bulgaria, like at a certain point, like Serbia claims Aaron Gordon as much as we do. In fact, we kind of made fun of him. Serbia loves him. Let him play for Team Serbia. Yeah. Let him play, man. Get a little bit of I, – I honestly was thinking about this idea of Jokic playing for Serbia for the next several years. And if you got Bogdanovic somehow in Denver, just the chemistry you would get for both Denver and Serbia would be off the charts. It would be incredible. You'd be building a chemistry in both levels that I would love. Um, Bones would be Ze- great. Zeke Naji. Zeke Naji. Probably a bit of a dark horse. Probably dark I don't horse. think he's going to make it out there. Bones <laughs> would be great. Aaron Gordon would be great. Jamal Murray would be great. What, Michael Porter, what do you think it would be like if Michael Porter flies out there and is seen courtside? It would the- be so shocking that, uh, like, it'd be awesome. It'd be, first of all, it'd be awesome, but I'd be pretty shocked. Uh, I'd be pretty shocked as well. Maybe Bruce Brown gets out there. K- KCP, I don't know. We'll see. There's good golf in uh, Belgrade for Bruce Brown, I heard. The, the last thing I have for you guys from today, Montrez Harrell <laughs> is joining the Philadelphia 76ers, and I think it's perfect. The Lakers and 76ers, two teams I don't like at all. One I hate, the other one I only just strongly dislike. They keep loading up on players I don't like. Montrez Harrell's one of my least favorite players in the NBA. I love that he's in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love this move for Philly. I absolutely love it. Uh, Montrez Harrell, look, he sucks in the playoffs. We know that. He's a good regular season player, though. Oh, wait. He can. He's a Doc Rivers guy, isn't he? I forgot that, about this. Dude, that's the He's thing. a Doc Rivers and a Daryl Morey guy. They just this. took all – Philly just took all of the worst parts from the old Clippers team without the cool parts. Philly is oh. quickly turning into the most soulless team in the NBA. I mean, it's it's oh, Brooklyn it's so soulless. forever. Kidding? It's Brooklyn forever, but Philly is, is right there on its heels. Daryl Morey is kind of a soulless GM, I mean, in my opinion. I mean, he's a – yeah. He's a bit of a false one, so he follows him wherever he goes. But, um, God, I, I'm i telling you, this made me – I loved when I saw it. I was like, oh, yes, now I know. In game six of the NBA Finals, when Embiid fouls out, Montrez is going to be the reason Jokic goes for 50. I can't wait. It's perfect. It's all setting up so perfectly. Yeah. A perfect. little – it did make me a little worried because, look, Harrell, he, he's fine in the regular season. He can play 20, 25 minutes off the bench, more if you need him to on some nights. He can eat innings in the regular season. Yeah. A Nuggets 76ers matchup, a little worried about the Nuggets backup center going up against Montrez Harrell, though. I'll say Alternatively, that. feeling good about Jokic going up against Montrez Harrell. I'm <laughs> feeling very good about that as well. Um, any other final thoughts from today, guys, in Eurobasket or from the NBA? I am excited for this Poland game. It'll be interesting. I don't know if Serbia is going to get into gamesmanship. I don't know if that's their MO here with the seeding. I know teams in this tournament are doing it more than maybe we were initially aware of. But if they both go head-to-head and both go all out, I'm really looking forward to this Poland game. Poland's played well. Uh, One last test. One less test for Serbia. If they can get back to that operating at all, you know, all cylinders level, not just the Jokic thing, I'm going to feel very good heading into the next round. Predicting a big bounce back game from my guy, Yarmaz. He's going to come up huge. He was good in this one in the fourth. What do you mean bounce back? I mean, he shot three of 11. The fourth, though. He was big in the fourth. Yeah, he was a big one I counted. Um, The note, only note I have to get us out of here on is the uh, first day of Denver Nuggets training camp is exactly three weeks from today. And I don't think people quite fully realize how crazy that is. We have another week and a half, two weeks left of Eurobasket. And three weeks from today, we're going to be covering Denver Nuggets training camp. Jesus. So uh, things happening really, really quickly. No this wonder is Jokic. It's always so tired looking, man. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. I do hate that he's going to get like one week off to, you know, from this to go do whatever. And then probably will end up sitting out training camp, which is a little right. bit of a bummer, but whatever. How we'll dare see. you say that about Yaramaz Oso Blanco? How but is he not necessarily wrong? <laughs> He's definitely he's an not- NBA player. Vote. What are you talking he's about? He's in between. He's an up. He's an on or off guy, man. We're gonna see both versions of him. Yeah. All right, guys. That does it for today's edition of the DMVR Nuggets podcast. We will be back again all week. We'll have to take one day off. I don't think it'll be tomorrow. 
Um, we'll probably end up taking Friday off, but we will be back all week and then back again over the weekend uh, covering this as it gets to the elimination round. Don't forget to hit that like on the way out. Leave us a rating review on Apple Podcasts if you have a chance and you're enjoying the show. Leave us a nice review there, five stars only, and we'll see everybody next time.